What just happened? Has the San Andreas Fault suddenly changed the entire industry? How will this affect the people living in California? Let's explore this incredible video about the San Andreas Fault and the unexpected shock it just sent throughout the industry. A continental right lateral strike slip transform fault, the San Andreas Fault runs for approximately 1,200 kilometers through the state of California. It is responsible for defining the tectonic barrier that separates the North American plate from the Pacific plate. Historically, and for the sake of scientific study, the fault has been divided into three primary segments, the northern, the center, and the southern, with each segment possessing distinct characteristics and varying degrees of earthquake danger. The typical rate of slippage over the length of the fault is between 20 and 35 millimeters per year. In the north, the fault comes to an end offshore near Eureka, California at the Mendocino Triple Junction, which is where three tectonic plates collide with one another. The San Andreas Fault could be ruptured by a big earthquake along the subduction zone and vice versa. This is a hypothesis that has been put up. The fault comes to an end toward the south, close to Bombay Beach, California in the Salton Sea. The motion of the plate is being rearranged from right lateral to divergent at this point. The plate boundary has been rifting and straining apart in this region, which is known as the Salton Trough. This has resulted in the formation of a new mid-ocean ridge that is an extension of the Gulf of California. The sediment that is deposited by the Colorado River is what is keeping the trough from being filled with water from the Gulf of Mexico. The flaw was initially discovered in 1895 by Professor Andrew Lawson of the University of California, Berkeley. In the aftermath of the earthquake that occurred in San Francisco in 1906, Lawson was tasked with determining the cause of the earthquake. He started by conducting a survey and charting the offsets along the surface ruptures, things like fences or roads that had been cut in half, for example. As he mapped the locations of these offsets on a map, he noticed that they made an almost perfect line on top of the fault that he had found earlier. He arrived at the conclusion that the fault must have been the source of the earthquake. This railway has a sag pond called San Andreas Lake as one of its stops. The lake was formed when the fault underwent an extensional stepover, which resulted in the formation of a natural depression in which water could collect. It's a widespread myth that Lawson named the fault after this lake, but that's not the case. However, some of his reports from 1895 and 1908 suggest that he called it after the San Andreas Valley, which is located in the surrounding area. As a result of the earthquake that occurred in San Francisco in 1906, Lawson came to the conclusion that the fault extended all the way into Southern California. Thomas Dibley, a geologist, came to the conclusion in 1953 that the fault might experience the lateral movement of hundreds of kilometers throughout its length. Drilling through the fault was part of a project called the San Andreas Fault Observatory at Deep, which was supported by the National Science Foundation and took place between 2004 and 2007 near Parkfield, California. The objective was to better understand the behavior of faults at deep, therefore core samples were collected, and direct geophysical and geochemical investigations were made. Formation Around the middle of the Cenozoic, some 30 million years ago, the San Andreas Fault began to develop. During this time period, a spreading center between the Pacific Plate and the Farallon Plate, which has since been mostly buried, with remnants including the Juan de Fuca Plate, Rivera Plate, Cocos Plate, and the Nazca Plate, was beginning to reach the subduction zone off the western coast of North America. The spreading ridge started to be subducted as a result of the fact that the relative motion between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate was distinct from the relative motion between the Farallon Plate and the North American Plate. This led to the formation of a new relative motion, as well as a new pattern of deformation along the plate boundaries. Along the San Andreas Fault, the most common occurrences of these geological characteristics can be found. A putative cause for the deformation of the basin and ridge, the separation of the Baja California Peninsula, and the rotation of the transverse range is also included in this theory. Only for the past about 5 million years has the primary southern segment of the San Andreas Fault proper been in existence. Around 22 to 13 million years ago, the Clemens Well Fenner San Francisco Fault Zone was the first known manifestation of the southern portion of the fault. The San Gabriel Fault was included in this model as a primary focus of movement between 10 and 5 Ma. At this time, the prevalent theory holds that the motion of the contemporary San Andreas Fault will eventually be transferred to a fault that is located within the eastern California shear zone. 
This complicated evolution, especially along the southern segment, is primarily caused by either the big bend or a difference in the motion vector between the plates and the trend of the fault in its surrounding branches. This difference in motion vector is the primary contributor to the complexity of this evolution. Modern Research It was revealed by seismologists that the San Andreas Fault near Parkfield in Central California produces an earthquake with a magnitude of 6.0 on average once every 22 years. When earthquakes were observed at Parkfield in 1857, 1881, 1901, 1922, 1934, and 1966, scientists projected that another earthquake would take place there in 1993. In the end, it transpired in the year 2004. Parkfield has become one of the most significant regions in the world for the study of major earthquakes as a direct result of the high frequency of activity that can be predicted. In 2004, construction on the San Andreas Fault Observatory at depth got underway just to the north of Parkfield. The San Andreas Fault will be penetrated by a hole that will be drilled roughly three kilometers deep into the Earth's crust by the SAFOD project. It has been decided to put in place a number of sensors that will record any earthquakes that occur in the region. An abundance of research has been conducted on the San Andreas Fault system in recent years. In instance, scientific investigations carried out during the course of the preceding 23 years have resulted in almost 3,400 publications. Big One A study that was conducted by Yuri Fialko, an associate professor at the Cecil H. and Ida M. Green Institute of Geophysics and Planetary Physics at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, discovered that the San Andreas Fault had reached a sufficient stress level for an earthquake to occur that has a magnitude that is greater than 7.0 on the moment magnitude scale. The study was published in the journal Nature in 2006. According to the findings of this study, the probability of a devastating earthquake may be rising at a rate that is significantly faster than what researchers had previously thought. In addition, the risk is currently concentrated on the southern section of the fault, which is the region around Los Angeles. This is due to the fact that while significant earthquakes have occurred relatively recently on the central and northern segments of the fault, the southern section has not seen any similar rupture for at least 300 years. According to the findings of this study, the metropolitan area of Bernardino, Riverside, and Imperial counties in California, as well as the Mexicali municipality of Baja, California, would sustain significant damage in the event of a major earthquake that occurred on the southernmost section of the San Andreas Fault. It would be strongly felt and could potentially cause significant damage throughout a large portion of Southern California, including densely populated areas of Los Angeles County, Ventura County, Orange County, San Diego County, Ensenada Municipality, and Tijuana Municipality, Baja California, San Luis Rio Colorado and Sonora, and Yuma, Arizona. Other areas that would be affected include Ensenada Municipality and Tijuana Municipality, Baja California, Ensenada Municipality and Tijuana buildings that are more than a few decades old, as well as those that were constructed on unconsolidated gravel or in coastal areas with high water tables, would be more susceptible to damage or collapse and thus subject to soil liquefaction. Fialco had this to say about the study. All of these data point to the fact that the fault is primed and ready for the next significant earthquake but we are unable to predict when the event that will trigger the earthquake will take place or when the earthquake itself will take place. It might happen tomorrow or it might not happen for at least 10 years from now. In spite of this, there has not been a significant earthquake in the Los Angeles region in the 16 years since that report was published, and two major reports published by the United States Geological Survey have made conflicting predictions regarding the likelihood of future seismic events. It has been difficult to achieve a level of earthquake prediction accuracy that would allow for additional safety measures to be taken. According to the most recent forecast from the USGS, which was published in November 2013 and given the name UCERF3, an earthquake with a magnitude of 6.7 or greater, that is an earthquake with a magnitude that is equal to or greater than the earthquake that occurred in 1994 in Northridge, occurs approximately once every 6.7 years across the entire state. The same analysis also came to the conclusion that there is a 7% chance that an earthquake of magnitude 8 or higher will take place somewhere along the San Andreas Fault during the next 30 years. Separate research conducted by the USGS in 2008 attempted to evaluate the physical, social, and economic repercussions of a significant earthquake in Southern California. 
According to the findings of that study, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake on southern portion of the San Andreas Fault may result in around 1,800 fatalities and $213 billion in property damage. Cascadia Connection An article published in 2008 that researched earthquakes that had occurred in the past along the Pacific coast discovered that there was a temporal association between seismic events that occurred on the northern San Andreas Fault and the southern part of the Cascadia subduction zone, which stretches from Vancouver Island to Northern California. The majority of the large earthquakes that have occurred on the northern San Andreas Fault in the past 3,000 years are thought by scientists to have been caused by quakes that occurred in the Cascadia subduction zone. In each of these time-correlated occurrences, the data also demonstrates that the rupture occurred in a trajectory that went from north to south. However, the earthquake that occurred in San Francisco in 1906 appears to be an exception to this correlation due to the fact that the movement of the tectonic plates was predominantly from south to north and that it was not preceded by a significant earthquake in the Cascadia Zone. Fault Zones of San Andreas Northern Fault The northern portion of the fault begins in Hollister and continues through the Santa Cruz Mountains, which were the epicenter of the Loma Prieta earthquake that occurred in 1989. It then travels up the San Francisco Peninsula, which is where Professor Lawson discovered it for the first time in 1895, and finally ends offshore of Daly City near Muscle Rock. This area is about where the epicenter of the San Francisco earthquake that occurred in 1906 was located. The fault makes its way back onto land in Bolinas Lagoon, which is located in Marin County approximately north of Stinson Beach. It runs just to the east of Bodega Head, across Bodega Bay, and back underwater, and then it comes onshore at Fort Ross. The linear depression of Tomales Bay, which divides the Point Reyes Peninsula from the mainland, is where it goes back underwater. In the area surrounding the San Francisco Bay area, there are a number of important sister faults that run more or less parallel to one another. Each of these faults is capable of producing earthquakes that are extremely destructive. The northern portion of the route continues overland from Fort Ross, creating in part a valley that is linear in shape and through which the Gualala River runs. After passing Point Arena, it heads back out to sea. After that, it continues to go submerged along the coast until it gets close to Cape Mendocino, at which point it starts to curve to the west and eventually arrives at the Mendocino Triple Junction. Southern Fault The Mojave portion which sometimes goes by the name Southern Segment, starts somewhere close to Bombay Beach in California. Upturned strata connected with that stretch of the fault can be found at Box Canyon, which is located close to the Salton Sea. After that, the fault travels northwest along the northern base of the San Gabriel Mountains, while it runs along the southern base of the San Bernardino Mountains. After that, it travels through the Cajon Pass and continues along the northern base of the San Gabriel Mountains. The movement that occurred along the San Andreas Fault is responsible for the formation of these mountains, which are also known as the Transverse Range. At a road cut in Palmdale that's been made for an Antelope Valley Freeway, you may examine a section of the fault very easily. Beside Elizabeth Lake Road in the direction of the northwest, the fault extends all the way to the town of Elizabeth Lake. The fault continues to curve to the north as it travels through Gorman, Tejon Pass and Fraser Park which is the beginning of what is known as the Great Bend. It is believed that this restraining bend is where the fault locks up in Southern California, with an earthquake recurrence period that ranges between approximately 140 and 160 years. The Carrizo Plain is a vast, treeless plain that can be found to the north-northwest of Fraser Park. The fault that runs across this plain can be seen in its entirety. The fault trace is delineated by the Elkhorn Scarp, for a significant portion of its length inside the plain. It is possible for an earthquake of magnitude 8.1 to occur in the southern segment of the fault, which begins near Parkland in Monterey County and continues all the way to the Salton Sea. This fault is located around 35 miles to the northeast of Los Angeles and crosses through the city at its closest point. A magnitude this large on this southern segment would generate an earthquake that would kill thousands of people in Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Riverside, and the neighboring areas, in addition to causing damage that would be in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Central Fault From Parkland to Hollister, the San Andreas Fault's core segment travels in a path that is more or less due north-northwest. 
as earthquakes occur along the portion of the fault that runs through Parkfield and the southern portion of the fault, the remainder of the central portion of the fault is affected by a phenomenon known as a seismic creep. This occurs when the fault slips continuously without being associated with any earthquakes. A transform boundary was responsible for its formation. Mysteries What is the true extent of the fault line? Although it is well known that the San Andreas Fault is a major fault line that runs through the state of California, there is still a great deal that geologists do not know about the exact magnitude of this fault. It is thought that the fault line begins in the Gulf of California, which is close to the border between the U.S. and Mexico. It is then believed to extend northward across California for more than 800 miles, and it is believed that it ends around Cape Mendocino. However, findings from more recent studies have thrown into question whether or not the fault line really does stretch as far north and south as was originally believed. For instance, in 2018, a study that was published in the journal Science Advances used data from seismic imaging to discover a previously unknown strand of the fault in Southern California. This strand of the fault line was located in the San Andreas Fault. This newly discovered portion of the fault, which is now known as the Salton Trough Fault, has the potential to raise the earthquake hazard in the surrounding area. In a similar vein, the findings of other investigations have pointed to the possibility that the fault line extends further north than was previously thought. For instance, research that was published in the journal Nature in 2017 revealed that the fault line might stretch all the way to Alaska, based on evidence of previous earthquakes in the region. These findings were based on seismic activity that had occurred in the region. In spite of these findings, there is still a significant amount of information that is unknown regarding the precise scope of the San Andreas Fault. To ascertain the full magnitude of this gigantic geological structure and to gain a better understanding of the potential threats that it may pose to the safety of the general people, additional research and investigation will be required. What factors contribute to the occurrence of earthquakes along the San Andreas Fault? Even while it has been established beyond a reasonable doubt that the movement of tectonic plates is what causes earthquakes along the San Andreas Fault, the precise mechanisms that underlie these movements are not yet completely known. The movement of the tectonic plates that could be caused by a wide variety of various things, such as the accumulation of pressure, the friction that occurs between the rocks, and even changes in the levels of groundwater. Is it possible that a significant earthquake on the San Andreas Fault may set off volcanic activity? There is proof that indicates that major earthquakes can trigger volcanic activity, and some scientists have speculated that a powerful earthquake along the San Andreas Fault could potentially set off dormant volcanoes in the region. This is because there is evidence to suggest that major earthquakes can trigger volcanic activity. But as of right now, there is no hard proof to back up this notion in any way. What would take place in the event that the entire fault line broke at the same time? Even while it is highly improbable that the entire San Andreas Fault will break at the same time due to the fact that it is made up of multiple different portions that move independently of each other, the results of such an occurrence would be devastating nonetheless. The earthquake that would come from this would very certainly be one of the greatest and most destructive in recorded history. It would cause extensive damage and loss of life not only in California but also in other parts of the world. Is it possible that there are faults in the area that have not yet been detected but that could cause earthquakes? Although the San Andreas Fault is the most well-known and studied fault line in California, there are likely many other faults in the region that have not yet been detected. The San Andreas Fault is the most well-known and studied fault line in California. These undiscovered faults have the potential to contribute to the occurrence of earthquakes and may in the future provide a risk to the safety of the general population. That's all for the video today. We will be right back. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to our channel.